The temporal cortex, which is a lateral structure, is involved in auditory processing and language comprehension. It also has, so the hearing is processed in the temporal lobe. Hearing itself is a remarkable process. What I would like you all to do is pick your pen up and just lift it in the air for me. Okay, and put your pens down. In order for that to happen, the first thing is, my voice box had to phonate, had to produce a voice, had to say words in an organised way to say that sentence in the first instance. Then sound waves then had to go in this room, concentrate themselves, not by your knees, but to your ears. And the external ear itself is an asymmetric structure. If you look at it, it's a very interesting design. It's, this external ear is called the pinna. And the pinna helps concentrate sounds onto the ear and project them in towards the auditory canal. From the auditory canal, sound is then transmitted as a vibration to the eardrum or the tympanic membrane. And that then vibrates. That vibration is transduced by a series of very specialized cells called hair cells, inner hair cells, which transmit an electrical signal through a nerve called the cochlear nerve in towards the temporal lobe. The temporal lobe then decodes that signal into words. Then words then bounce on this region here of the temporal lobe called Wernicke's area. And Wernicke's area then thinks, have I heard that before? A pen. Because none of you lifted up your jackets. Because the Wernicke's area reflected on what a pen was. Now, all of this was happening contemporaneously, instantaneously, without you really thinking about it in detail. Because why didn't you take your coat up? Because you knew what a pen was. But how did you know what a pen was, without getting too philosophical? You had to have it in your memory. And then it had to be uh, ratified. Then you're in an audience. You don't want to pick the wrong thing up. So you're double-checking. It is my pen. Then from there, an impulse is sent out to the frontal lobe, to the precentral uh, gyrus, where impulses are sent to the hand, where you grip your pen, and then impulses are sent to your biceps and your triceps and your brachioradialis and your flexor carpi ulnaris, and then you're able to lift that pen up. So it's quite a remarkable thing to do. And all of this is happening because there are millions and billions of synapses and neurons. And the temporal lobe is involved in processing hearing. There is an interesting condition in which, you don't, in which the patient does not understand what words the patient is saying. But they say perfect words. So they'll say a sentence which makes no sense, but they'll say it as if they are speaking sense. That's because they don't have comprehension of the word. It's very hard to do that when you have an intact Wernicke's area. But if you hear a patient speak complete gobbledygook, but in confidence, that, that condition is called Wernicke's aphasia. Contrast that to a patient who knows what they want to say, but they can't say it because they're, they're not able to control the, the muscles that are involved in speech. That is a lesion not in the temporal lobe, but in the frontal lobe in an area called Broca's area. So I don't want to get too bogged down into the details uh, of this because that, that can be very complicated. But suffice it to say that the temporal lobe is involved in auditory processing and language comprehension. And this is a, a small note just explaining that Broca's area is here and Wernicke's area is here. The way I remember that Broca's area is a speech uh, production of speech uh, issue is because this is in the motor region, and to produce speech is a motor activity. Whereas the comprehension of words is a sensory activity, and so, as you'd expect, there's an overlap of the parietal lobe and the temporal lobe.